Today's case takes place in Baotu, a mighty steel industrial center situated in the grasslands of Inner Mongolia, China. Late one night, the emergency sent Bio2 No. 3 hospital received an urgent call. On the other end of the line was a young woman's trembling voice, reporting that her husband had suddenly suffered a heart attack and was in critical condition. She desperately pleaded for medical personnel to come immediately. The address provided was an old apartment at No. 8, Youth Road 700 Kundalin District, less than 1.2 miles from the hospital. Within five minutes, the ambulance arrived at the scene. However, after examination, the doctors determined that the victim had already passed away. During the death certificate procedures, Dr. Zhang Xiaomei examined the body and made a startling discovery. When she lifted the shirt of the victim, a middle-aged man, she was shocked to find numerous bruises covering his body. These injuries were clearly caused by blunt objects, completely different from typical heart attack symptoms. Yet strangely, the wife continued to insist that her husband had died from a sudden heart attack. With unusual signs on the body, Dr. Zhang questioned the family about the origin of the bruises. However, she received only evasive answers, as if they were deliberately avoiding the truth. Sensing something sinister about the death, Dr. Zhang immediately reported the case to the police upon returning to the hospital. Upon receiving the report, the Kundalun District's major crime unit quickly arrived at the scene. Entering the dark, damp apartment, the detectives found the victim's body already dressed in funeral clothes and laid out ceremonially in the middle of the room. Notably, funeral home staff were already present, preparing to take the body for cremation. This struck the police as highly suspicious. Why would the family rush to arrange the funeral less than an hour after the ambulance had left? What were they trying to hide? To clarify the situation, the Baotu police asked the funeral home staff to leave and split into two teams. One team took the body to the medical examiner's office for autopsy, while the other remained at the scene to collect evidence and take witness statements. The victim was quickly identified as Zhao Shuiguang, a 53-year-old wealthy businessman who was well-known in the local iron ore industry. At the scene were three other people besides the victim, the young woman who had called for emergency services was Sun Ji, Zhao's wife. According to Sun's account, everything happened when her husband was walking down the stairs and suddenly had a heart attack, collapsing with blood streaming from his nose. She said she was about to get a towel to clean him up when, in just moments, he fell into a coma. In a panic, Sun rushed to call emergency services. However, when questioned more closely about her husband's condition before the alleged heart attack, the young woman could only bow her head and sob uncontrollably, unable to speak. The other two people present were a young couple, Liu Zhenjun, age 21, also from Bao Tu, and his girlfriend Kui Yan, age 20, originally from Henan province. Strangely, Kui was crying even more hysterically than Sun, the victim's wife, when police questioned them about their relationship with Zhao, both remained silent. Why were a middle-aged married couple and a young couple together in this old apartment? What connection did they have to Zhao's death? To uncover the truth, the police took all three individuals to the station for questioning while another team continued examining the crime scene. That evening, the autopsy results revealed that Zhao's body had multiple injuries caused by blunt force trauma from what appeared to be a stick or hammer, particularly around the neck area. There were also ligature marks on his neck, arms, and legs. The cause of death was determined to be multiple broken ribs, leading to internal bleeding and multiple organ failure. These autopsy findings completely contradicted Sun's story about her husband dying from a heart attack. What had driven the young wife to conceal the true cause of her husband's death? And what role did Liu and Kui play in this mysterious case? At the police station, Liu was the first to break the silence. He confessed to killing Zhao with a hollow plastic pipe, but insisted he didn't know the victim personally and had only acted to protect his girlfriend. According to his statement that afternoon when he visited his girlfriend's apartment, he walked in to find Zhao sexually assaulting Kui. In a fit of rage, Liu claimed he pulled Zhao away and struck him with the pipe. However, Liu maintained that he only hit him a few times and never expected Zhao to be so frail that he would die from the blows. 
Liu's testimony was corroborated by Kuei, the alleged victim of the assault. She told the police she worked as an insurance agent, and Zhao was a client she had met only two months prior. According to Kui, Zhao wasn't just any wealthy businessman, he was a prominent figure in the local iron ore industry. However, from their very first meeting, she had noticed his lecherous nature. Zhao had repeatedly made inappropriate advances, even suggesting she could live an easier life instead of working hard selling insurance. Kui claimed that in hopes of securing lucrative insurance contracts from Zhao, she had endured his inappropriate advances. However, her tolerant attitude only made him more aggressive. On the evening of June 1st, 2013, using insurance business as a pretext, Zhao suddenly visited Kui's apartment. He brought food and a bottle of liquor, clearly intending to get the young woman drunk to carry out his sinister plan. Under pressure, Kui reluctantly had a few drinks. While she was tipsy, Zhao allegedly took advantage of her. Shortly after, Liu, Kui's boyfriend, arrived to confront Zhao and demand compensation, promising to keep the matter quiet. However, what began as a teaching lesson ended in death. Now that Zhao was gone forever, there was no way to verify whether Liu and Kui's statements were true or false. To prove their innocence during the investigation, Liu and Kui provided the Bao Tu police with a handwritten note bearing what appeared to be Zhao's signature. The note read, At approximately 10.30 p.m. on June 1, 2013, I took advantage of a young woman named Kui Yan. I accept full responsibility for my criminal actions. In addition to this confession note, Liu also produced a voice recorder. On the recording, a voice believed to be Zhao's could be heard admitting to the crime. After investigation, the Bao Tu police confirmed that both the handwritten note and the voice recording were indeed Zhao's. However, they weren't quick to conclude that Zhao had actually committed the alleged assault, considering the possibility that he had been forced to make these confessions. Moreover, there was another suspicious aspect to the case. While the autopsy showed Zhao died from external trauma, Sun had initially claimed he died from a heart attack and falling downstairs. Why would she lie? At the police station, Sun remained in a state of extreme distress, only able to sob uncontrollably without speaking. To dig deeper into the case, investigators decided to visit Sun's family home. Through her mother's account, a tragic story began to unfold. Sun had married Zhao in late 2010, when she was just 26 and he was 51, even older than her father. Although Zhao was a wealthy iron ore tycoon, Sun's family couldn't accept the huge age gap between them. They strongly opposed the marriage, but Sun insisted on her choice. Eventually, her parents reluctantly gave in. In the early days of their marriage, Sun would often boast to her parents about her luxurious life, the mansion, luxury cars, and material comforts. However, this happiness was short-lived. Less than a year later, she moved back to her mother's home. Only then did her mother learn that Sun and Zhao had secretly separated. However, Sun kept the reason for their separation private, as if hiding some unspeakable truth. The police patiently investigated the marriage and finally got Sun to open up. Through tears, Sun revealed that she both feared and hated Zhao. After just a few months of marriage, her husband had become a completely different person, treating her like a servant in their home. The tragedy didn't end there. Sun had accidentally discovered countless flirtatious text messages between Zhao and other women, including evidence of secret affairs. Enraged by her husband's betrayal, Sun once lost control and confronted Zhao in a heated argument. To her shock, instead of showing remorse, her elderly husband responded with physical violence. After this incident, completely devastated by the marriage, Sun packed her bags, left their luxurious villa, and was determined to get a divorce. However, the case still held many mysteries. Why was Sun present at the scene when Zhao met his fate? According to Sun's statement, on the afternoon of June 2, 2013, the day before Zhao's death, she received a call from her husband's phone number. Initially, Sun thought Zhao wanted to discuss divorce arrangements, but surprisingly, the angry voice on the other end belonged to a young man, none other than Liu Zhenzhen. 
Liu told Sun about how Zhao had allegedly assaulted his girlfriend and demanded her presence to resolve the compensation issue. When Sun arrived at the rental apartment, she found Zhao tied up. Trapped in a desperate situation and fearing Liu and Kui would report him to the police, Zhao offered to pay one million yuan to keep the matter quiet. At first, Sun thought her husband had simply called to borrow money. However, Zhao then revealed a devastating truth. All his assets, from properties to businesses, had long been transferred to his first wife and daughter. He now had nothing left but debts. The reason he called Sun was to ask her to advance the 1 million yuan compensation payment. Faced with this bitter truth, Sun lost control. In a fit of rage, she grabbed a nearby plastic pipe and began beating Zhao repeatedly. Liu, frustrated at not getting any compensation, joined in venting his anger on the helpless man. By the afternoon of June 3rd, the situation took a turn for the worse when Zhao suddenly fell into a coma. When medical personnel pronounced Zhao dead, Sun was stunned. Remembering her own blows to Zhao's body, she realized she would face legal consequences. In panic, Sun, along with Liu and Kui, fabricated the story about Zhao dying from a heart attack and falling downstairs. Initially, the statements from Sun Liu and Kui seemed to align perfectly. The apparent truth of the case emerged. After allegedly assaulting Kui, Zhao was beaten to death by his wife and the victim's boyfriend in a fit of rage. However, was it really that simple? An unexpected discovery at the crime scene would turn the case in an unforeseen direction. During a thorough search of the rental apartment, Detectives found a suspicious white plastic bag hidden in a corner of the balcony. Inside were a wooden stick, two pieces of rope, and a plastic pipe. Forensic experts confirmed these were the weapons Liu had used to injure Zhao. However, what particularly caught the investigators' attention was a quartz wall clock also found in the plastic bag. This made no logical sense. Normally, the clock would be hanging on the wall. If Liu was only trying to hide weapons, there would be no reason to remove and hide the clock unless it was somehow connected to the crime. The technical experts conducted a detailed examination of the clock and made a crucial discovery. The number six on the clock face was hollowed out, concealing a tiny hidden camera. The camera was ingeniously disguised, clearly intended for secret recording. From this clue, investigators deduce there must be associated recording equipment. Sure enough, when they continued searching the apartment, they found a laptop hidden under the bed in the bedroom. The computer contained secretly recorded footage, showing intimate moments between Zhao and Kui. These images shocked all the officers present. Initially, investigators suspected Zhao might be a pervert who secretly filmed women for his own gratification. This theory seemed to align with Kui's earlier testimony about his lecherous nature. However, several inconsistencies remained in this hypothesis. If Zhao had installed the camera, why would Liu and Kui, after discovering it, help him hide the evidence? Moreover, the apartment was rented by Kui, not owned by Zhao. If he wanted to secretly film someone, he could have easily done so in his own home or a hotel room. Why go through the trouble of installing a camera in Kui's apartment, which was both risky and complicated? These mounting irregularities led investigators to realize this case was far from simple. They strongly suspected Liu and Kui were lying. Under intense interrogation, Liu finally revealed a shocking truth. According to Liu's new testimony, while the intimate encounter between Zhao and Kui did occur, it wasn't forced as they had previously claimed. The entire incident was an elaborate scheme designed to extort money from Zhao. The plan was executed in stages. First, Liu directed Kui to play the role of an innocent girl to gain Zhao's trust. Then, Kui would pretend to be drunk, creating an opportunity for Zhao to take her to the bedroom in the pre-prepared apartment. Liu had previously installed the hidden camera in the wall clock. Throughout the encounter, Kui merely had to act convincingly while Zhao fell completely into their trap. With the secretly recorded video, they believed Zhao would have no choice but to pay the blackmail money. The investigators were astounded by the cunning sophistication of this young couple. But what about Sun? Why was she at the scene? Why did she collaborate in Liu and Kui's deception? 
the police suspected Sun played a crucial role in this case. However, faced with her continued silence, they couldn't find any leads, until another mysterious detail discovered at the crime scene finally revealed the whole truth. During their investigation, detectives found a piece of paper tucked in the living room sofa. Based on its contents, it appeared to be a promissory note written by Zhao to Sun. Handwriting analysis confirmed it was indeed Zhao's writing. Significantly, the note was dated June 2, 2013, coinciding with when Sun, Zhao, Liu, and Kui were all present at the apartment discussing compensation. The note stated that before their marriage, Zhao had borrowed 1 million yuan from Sun and promised to repay both principal and interest by June 15, 2013. If overdue, Zhao would pay monthly interest of 10,000 yuan, about $1,400, until the debt was fully repaid. Notably, the interest rate specified in the note was four times higher than standard commercial lending rates at the time. While the overall content of the note seemed questionable, the terms regarding interest rates and penalties were written with unusual precision and clarity. This detail led investigators to suspect that the document wasn't hastily written by Zhao under duress, but had likely been prepared in advance by Sun. According to Sun's initial statement, she came to the apartment to help resolve her husband's compensation issue. However, rather than helping Zhao out of his predicament, she forced him to sign a promissory note for 1 million yuan. This made police question Sun's true motives. During interrogation, Sun claimed the 1 million yuan mentioned in the note was money she had lent to Zhao before their marriage, though without any documentation. She said that after they were married, she had repeatedly asked for repayment, but Zhao refused. This time, with Zhao in trouble and needing her help, Sun saw an opportunity to force him to acknowledge the debt. When faced with police questioning, Sun showed no remorse. She calmly admitted that because she still harbored hatred for her husband, she not only didn't try to stop Liu from beating Zhao, but actually felt satisfied watching it. Sun thought that in his desperate situation, Zhao would have to yield, making it the perfect opportunity to recover her supposed one million yuan. However, the police were skeptical about Sun's financial capacity. Through multiple interviews with Sun's family, her mother had revealed their difficult financial circumstances. With an annual income of only 40,000 to 50,000 yuan, about 5,600 to 7,000 dollars, it seemed impossible for Sun to have possessed 1 million yuan to lend. At this time, Sun awkwardly said that it was the money her ex-lover gave her before they broke up. According to Sun, she met her ex-lover by chance, and her family did not know about it. She herself did not want to mention this again. Before leaving Bao Tu City, her ex-lover left Sun one million yuan yuan in cash. This money was hidden in a teddy bear, and Sun did not know at first. It was not until she brought the bear home that she was surprised to discover that there were ten stacks of money inside, each stack of 100,000 yuan. At this point, you must have realized that Sun's statement had many contradictions. A teddy bear containing one million yuan in cash must be very heavy. 100 yuan weighs about 0.035 ounces, so 1 million yuan would weigh about 22 pounds. How could a girl like Sun bring a teddy bear weighing more than 22 pounds home without the slightest suspicion? Sun's obvious lies only made the case more complex. The Baotu police were convinced that darker secrets lay behind these false statements. To uncover the truth, they decided to expand their investigation delving deeper into Sun and Zhao's social relationships. During previous interrogations, Sun's mother had revealed that her daughter had to lower herself to marry Zhao. However, Zhao's family had a completely different perspective. Zhao's sister insisted that Sun had married her brother purely for money, claiming there was never any real affection between them. According to her, from the day Sun became her sister-in-law, she had never once cooked a meal for her husband. Zhao's family firmly denied all rumors about him having affairs or keeping mistresses. In fact, Zhao's sister counter-accused Sun of being the unfaithful one in the marriage, claiming she was the one having an extramarital affair. Following this lead from Zhao's family, investigators dug deeper and made a shocking discovery. Sun was indeed having an affair with a younger man. And surprisingly, her lover was none other than Liu, 
one of the primary suspects in the murder case. When examining Sun's phone, investigators not only found Liu's number in her contacts, but also uncovered a crucial piece of evidence. On the evening of June 1st, 2013, Sun had sent Liu a telling message. Everything is going according to plan. Just say he took advantage of you and remember to save the video. This text message exposed the dark truth behind the case. Sun was actually the mastermind pulling all the strings. So what was the real story? It all began in May 2010, more than three years before the murder. After divorcing his first wife, Zhao married Sun Ji, a woman 26 years his junior. However, within six months of living together, Zhao began showing strange behavior, frequently staying out all night. Although Zhao could provide Sun with a wealthy lifestyle, he looked down on her because of her poor family background. According to Sun, at home, Zhao would constantly demand massages from her. If she did anything wrong, he would immediately beat and verbally abuse her. As a result, Sun's body was often covered in scars. What Sun found most unbearable was Zhao's constant texting with other women. Suspecting her husband of infidelity, she repeatedly asked for a divorce. But each time Zhao would angrily respond, If you want a divorce, fine, but you'll leave with nothing. Don't even think about touching the Zhao family's money. Being betrayed by her husband and unable to claim anything in a divorce left Sun feeling deeply resentful. By the end of 2012, Sun decided to file for divorce and demand compensation, citing her husband's infidelity. However, her lawyer's advice gave her pause. To win the case, she would need concrete evidence of her husband's affairs. Without proof, the court would have no basis for judgment. Determined to find evidence of her husband's infidelity, in March 2013, Sun approached a computer repair shop where she met Liu, a young technician. For 200 yuan, about $28 per day, Sun hired Liu as a private detective to secretly monitor and gather evidence of Zhao's misconduct. However, after more than two months of surveillance, Liu couldn't find any evidence of Zhao's alleged affairs. Ironically, during their work together, Liu and Sun developed romantic feelings for each other. According to Liu's confession, their relationship began purely physical, initiated by him and readily accepted by Sun. Over time, their affair grew more passionate. The deeper Sun fell into this illicit relationship, the more determined she became to escape her marriage with Zhao. About a month and a half before the murder, Sun devised an intricate plan to lure the tiger from the mountain. She decided to set up a trap to obtain evidence of her husband's infidelity. To execute this scheme, Sun needed an actress to play the bait. She described her ideal candidate to Liu, a young, beautiful, tall woman with fair skin, aged between 25 and 28. After some searching, Liu found the perfect candidate, Kui Yan, who would later pose as an insurance agent. In reality, Kui wasn't an insurance agent, nor was she Liu's girlfriend as they had claimed. She was actually a massage parlor worker Liu had recruited from a local establishment. To persuade Kui to participate in the plan, Sun made an attractive offer. She promised to pay 5,000 wen, about $700, after completing the mission and would help Kui establish her own business. On May 7, 2013, following Sun's instructions, Kui rented a two-bedroom apartment to set their trap. Liu secretly installed recording equipment inside the wall clock in the bedroom. To approach their target, Kui played the role of an enthusiastic insurance agent, frequently calling and flirting with Zhao. However, despite Kui's three attempts to make contact, Zhao remained cautious and hadn't taken the bait. At this point, Sun decided to change tactics. She told Kui to suggest meeting in person to discuss business. At the mention of a face-to-face -face meeting, the supposedly lecherous Zhao immediately agreed. After several meetings, Zhao's intention to seduce Kui became increasingly apparent. So on the afternoon of June 1st, 2013, Sun, Liu, and Kui decided to spring their trap. According to plan, Kui called Zhao, pretending it was her birthday, and inviting him to her apartment for a private chat. Faced with such an enticing invitation, Zhao immediately accepted. As anticipated, Zhao fell into their trap and became intimate with Kui. 
Right after, Liu and his accomplices burst in, with Liu pretending to be Kui's boyfriend catching them in the act. Sun, the mastermind behind this performance, also appeared, pretending she had received a call from Zhao and joining the compensation negotiations as a family member. However, things didn't go as smoothly as they had planned. Zhao continuously resisted, deliberately stalling when forced to write a confession and record an admission. Sun recalled that Zhao wrote extremely slowly, intentionally made spelling mistakes, and even blew his nose on the paper. After being forced to rewrite multiple times, Sun began losing patience. Sun began physically attacking Zhao. As time passed, both Sun and Liu increasingly lost control, their blows becoming more and more brutal. For over 40 hours, from the evening of June 1st until the afternoon of June 3rd, Zhao was denied food and water, enduring only continuous savage beatings. By the time Sun and Liu realized the gravity of the situation, it was too late. Zhao had fallen into a critical condition beyond medical help. Faced with irrefutable evidence, all three suspects finally confessed to their crimes. Sun Ji and Liu Zhenjun were identified as the main conspirators, while Kui Yan was charged as an accomplice. All were prosecuted for intentional homicide and extortion, facing severe legal punishment. Ironically, the hidden camera, their tool intended for blackmail, became the crucial evidence that sealed their fate. A miscalculation none of them had anticipated. This was an intricate case with multiple layers of deception. The three perpetrators had woven a complex web of lies, making the truth extremely difficult to uncover. If Dr. Zhang hadn't promptly alerted the police, if the investigators hadn't persistently pursued seemingly minor clues, perhaps the truth would have remained buried forever. A wealthy and successful businessman like Zhao Shuiguang met his end in pain and humiliation. The puppet master behind it all was his young, beautiful wife. Perhaps from the very beginning, the marriage between Sun Ji and Zhao Shuiguang was doomed to fail, as it was built entirely on calculation and exploitation rather than love. And that's it for today's case. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next videos.